The revolving door between the FDA and Big Pharma is putting us all at risk. Two officials that used to be at the FDA have just taken jobs at Moderna. So does that mean that COVID vaccines could have been introduced for motivations other than the health of the general public? No, this must be a conspiracy theory. After all, this is coming from those conspiracy theorists at the British Medical Journal. Oh. <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Wherever you're watching us right now, remember that our home is Rumble, where we stream at these times every day. Without you, we have no movement. We exist to serve you and awaken together because the legacy media are simply not going to tell you the truth about the issues that matter. Do you really think there'd be a COVID inquiry in the UK right now were it not for independent media voices that you support talking about Robert Malone and talking talking about Peter McCulloch and Jay Bhattacharya and all the scientific voices, true scientific voices, that gainsay the narrative at the top. Do you really think there'll be Senate hearings about COVID were it not for the role of independent media in highlighting the many problems? But it's not just independent media. There sometimes are great investigations conducted by groups or organisations or indeed magazines like the British Medical Journal, a long-standing and credible organisation who have concerns about the revolving door and it's revolving so far fast now. If it were a comet, you'd be seeing it again in 10 seconds time because people are leaving the FDA where they regulate and approve vaccines to get jobs at Moderna where they manufacture vaccines. And with the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak still refusing to admit whether he profited when his $500 million hedge fund invested in Moderna, it's time for us to ask questions. Can we trust this revolving door? Can we trust the legacy media to answer and indeed even ask the right questions? And what exactly has been going on for the last few years? Why is it not being reported on correctly, except in this instance by the British Medical Journal? Let's get into it. Update to COVID-19 vaccinations is now approved by the FDA. And the new boosters could be available in the next few days. That's an advert. It's an advert. These new boosters could be available in the next few days. Have you ever seen them? Ask Albert Baller a difficult question. Have you ever seen a mainstream media outfit go, Mr. Baller, thank you for coming on and Moonshot, what a great great title. Can you tell us, though, about adverse events from these vaccines? Can you tell us, is the drug you trialed the one you released? And when it comes to Moderna and these boosters, how come you keep employing people from the FDA? Does that mean that the FDA, whose job it is to regulate, that means control and ensure morality and incorruptibility in the pharmaceutical industry can be trusted? Or does it suggest that there's such a confluent, porous integration between that agency and the companies they're meant to regulate that we, the people, remember those three words, are just exposed to whatever product they think is profitable. The FDA approved updated COVID-19 boosters for Moderna and Pfizer vaccinations Monday. Look at the headline, boosters approved. Does that not show a relation between the legacy media and Big Pharma? So Big Pharma, the FDA, the legacy media, all working together to get you to go get your boosters before Pfizer and Moderna's stock price plummets even further. What it's starting to look like is the whole pandemic period was coordinated on a scale between ineptitude and absolute malfeasance. And this story about FDA officials getting jobs at Moderna, what direction does that take us in? Let me know in the chat right now, you awakened wonder yeah. Once these vaccinations are fully approved, which is a matter of time because everyone at Moderna and FDA are firm friends, all they care about is our little friend. They care about the Benjamins, baby. Which could happen as early as next week. The turnaround time to get those shots to the public will be quick. You better believe it. Christmas is coming. Flu season is coming. Get those boosters out there before any people realize how harmful this product is. It typically only takes us a few days to get that planned. Now, there are several levels of approval. There's well done, jolly well done, and get that thing injected into your fetus as soon as possible. And so um, the FDA is just really that first clearance. And then also the Advisory Council for Immunization Practices has to approve everything. And then the final sign off is the CDC. Well, there you go. Nothing to worry about there. It just seems like one incorruptible organization after another with no worrying financial ties to Big Pharma or indeed financial ties to the laboratories that maybe caused the entire fiasco. I'm speaking, of course, of Anthony Fauci's relationship with the Wuhan labs that some have said preceded by some years the outbreak of COVID-19. Astonishing to think this might be true. Astonishing to think no 
investigations were conducted. No difficult questions were asked. What a peculiar world we're living in. According to an article from the Associated Press, the FDA is opening their newest shots to most Americans. It's part of a shift to treat fall updates of the COVID-19 vaccine, much like getting a yearly flu shot. Just something you do automatically without thinking, and preferably you'll live your whole life automatically without thinking. Just eating bad food, getting injected with bad drugs, and possibly looking at pornography. This is the precious gift of life that you're wasting. This isn't coming from some maligned voice in the independent media space. This is coming from a professional journal, the British Medical Journal. They've got concerns. Do you notice now that slowly, let me know if you've noticed this, the information is leaking out. They're just trying to manageably go, oh yeah, there might be a bit of pericarditis. There might be a little bit of myocarditis. Yes, okay, lockdowns didn't work. Oh, sorry about masks. Oh yeah, Florida and California, roughly the same outcomes. Sweden and New York, roughly the same kind of outcomes. Oh no, the whole thing's been a massive, massive coup. And the legacy media, instead of openly reporting it and asking intelligent questions, had other things on their minds. Let's get into it. An investigation has raised concerns about the cosy relationship between the Food and Drug Association, that's the FDA, and Moderna during the COVID pandemic. Now, you don't necessarily want hostile relationships between a regulatory body and big pharma, but you do want them to actually investigate the efficacy of these products. You don't want at the back of their mind, oh, it'd be really good for business if we just approve this stuff. And maybe I could get a job at Moderna in just a couple of weeks, which is what's happened in one or two instances, more than one or two instances, actually. They they essentially function as one organism. The report published in the British Medical Journal found two top FDA officials in charge of approving COVID vaccines left to join the pharma giant and received six-figure salaries just months after shots got the green light. Okay, we've given those shots the green light. When can I start my job? Could you give us a couple of months? Oh, God, how many people are going to have had pericarditis by then? Well, you approved this drug. Yeah, but because of the job. Hey, listen, we're just trying to make vaccines. I tested these on five mouses. The BMJ investigation by Dr. Peter Doshi, University of Mary, Maryland pharmacy professor warned about the lack of safeguards to prevent the revolving door culture that can create at least the appearance of conflicts of interest. Revolving door's not a culture, is it? It's not like jazz or hip hop or Paris in the 1920s. Oh, sacre bleu, why don't we just let people get jobs that are clearly a conflict of interest? It's not the appearance of conflicts of interest. In fact, it's not even a conflict of interest, is it? The alignment of interest. It's in my interest to approve this shot so Moderna have got more money so that in a couple of months I can get a six figure salary. There's no conflict of interest there. Conflict of interest is what we want. What we want is an empowered population, well informed by independent media, and able to vote for independent political candidates who are dedicated to bringing an end to this hypocrisy and corruption. What we've got is total alignment of interests. Technically, FDA employees are supposed to wait one year before lobbying or having any communication to or appearance for any officer or employee of their former agency on behalf of anyone seeking official action. But the BMJ probe found that because the FDA keeps no record of where where employees go. They don't even keep a record of that. They're meant to be regulating things. Now, where the hell's those employees? I didn't keep any record of that, boss. Well, hold on a minute. There's some guys from Moderna. Maybe they know. You look a lot like Frank. That's right. Didn't you work here last week? Yes, I did. And what were you doing? We were approving this vaccine. And that's what we want you to now endorse and say is for sale at a low, low price. Frank, I'd do anything for you. Ah, thank you. But the BMJ probe found that because the FDA keeps no record of where employees go, Dr. Dorian Fink and Dr. Jaya Goswami slipped through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't slip through the cracks. They slipped off to Moderna and got a great job. Shouldn't have things slipping through cracks. That's probably what happened at Wuhan. How did that bat coronavirus get out? Oh, see all these cracks. Yeah, seal them up, you lunatics. Some of these viruses might make it all the way to the... What's that over there? To the wet market. You've got to be careful. Dr. Fink and Goswami worked at the FDA for years as medical regulators for vaccines. We can't bring you this complex content designed to bring down the systems of tyranny that demand that you remain in spiritual chains without the support of you, of course, and our partners. And who do we love more than those guys at Sticker Mule? That's why we've teamed up with them this week again to create a very, very limited edition sticker pack. There are six stunning designs that are only available in this pack. You can smell the newness and they're all made with Sticker Mule's magic touch. Sticker Mule has 10,000 of these packs. That's right, 10,000 ready to deliver to your address absolutely free. Just go to Sticker Mule dot com forward slash Russell and fill out the form. That's all you got to do. Now, let's get back to dismantling the machinery of this systemic 
globalist tyranny. Dr. Fink works his way up to the post of lead medical officer in the FDA's Office of Vaccines Research and Review, where he stayed until his appointment as acting deputy director of the Office of Vaccines Research and Review. At the FDA, the physician scientist was responsible for working with vaccine manufacturers to advise them on the development of vaccines during the pandemic. He was ultimately part of the decision to authorise the Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna mRNA shots. Right. So he was there approving and authorising shots, which subsequently have had a lot more questions about him. Dear old Fink and Goswami, they weren't focused. They were too busy thinking about their six-figure salaries. Approved, approved, when can I start my job? Another couple of months, Fink, for Christ's sake, relax. <laughs> approved. You just approved my wristwatch, you maniac. Will it help against coronavirus? Do you know what it might? Can we sell these? <laughs> approved, double approved. He left that role in December 2022. Just two months later, just two months later, he took a six-figure job of head of the translational medicine and early clinical development within the Department of Infectious Diseases at Moderna. He just slipped right into that role, <laughs> did old Fink. Difficult, isn't it, sometimes to get a new job? How are you going to get on? Will we make friends with your new colleagues? Not for old Fink. He knew them all already, and they loved him because he'd just made them all rich. Meanwhile, Dr. Goswami held her position as medical officer for the agency's Centre for Biologics, Evaluation and Research from March 2020 until June 2022. In that post, she had, in her words, broad oversight over vaccines and biologics clinical development. She was responsible for evaluating whether clinical data produced by Moderna regarding its two-dose vaccine shot met the agency's regulatory standards for approval. That's a ridiculous position that Dr. Goswami's been in. Now, doctor, does our data meet the criteria for approval at the FDA? I like that question, but before I answer this question, let me ask you one. How long's my lunch break? Two hours? I think it meets the criteria. Come on through. How many mouses did you uh, test that on? Two mouses. And how are they? We've not checked. Ultimately, the vaccine was licensed in 2022. What a surprise. In June 2022, the same month that she left the FDA, she moved on to take a position at Moderna as Director of Clinical Development in Treatments and Vaccines for Infectious Diseases. Huh, what an incredible coincidence to move from the FDA, who are approving vaccines, to Moderna, that are making vaccines. But don't let that make you cynical about this whole process. Don't let that make you think that there was a kind of concerted effort to make these vaccines as appealing as possible, which could have led to them not being effectively tested or accurately reported on. And if you don't feel insured, let me get Dr. Goswami and Dr. Fink over. They'll reassure you. No, these vaccines are very, very lucrative. I mean, effective. The thing I like most about this booster shot is my kitchen. I mean, sorry, no. Like, I was gonna get a kitchen anyway. While specific salary data for those positions at Moderna are not available, salaries for similar positions at the company in executive and leadership roles tend to range from $195,000 to as high as $330,000 annually. The average salary of an FDA worker, meanwhile, hovers around $135,000 thousand dollars. They just hover there, approving vaccines, waiting for that special day. So you've done enough now. Come on in. Before I approve this vaccine, where's my parking spot? That's right next to the buses. When agency staffers go to work for the companies whose product they reviewed and voted to approve, they raise concerns about conflicts of interest and impartiality that undermine the FDA's objectivity when it comes to determining the fate of their products. Isn't this sort of exactly how you think the world runs? Isn't it sort of exactly that you feel that within government now, there are people, the government of the UK, there are people that invested in Moderna, that within the FDA, there are people that approved of Moderna vaccines that then go get jobs at Moderna, that within Pfizer there are people getting filmed saying that the clinical trial stuff didn't make sense, that Pfizer booted their stuff 75 years in the future, that Albert Baller was treated on news media like he was George Michael. How exactly did you do it? Did Andrew Ridgely come up with any of BioNTech's ideas? How can we not ask questions of this situation? How can we trust anything they tell us ever again? The reason they're working so hard to shut down through censorship and other means dissenting voices is because because they know that if you're well informed, ultimately you will reject their model and you will not use their product. How many hundreds of millions have been lost because this process, this trajectory, this agenda got broken down. They want you having these vaccines every day. They're going to say to you, this should be just like a cold or a flu. You should get these things every couple of years, every couple of months maybe. Independent media and in particular you through your skepticism and discerning voices interrupted a trajectory that might otherwise have been unimaginably different. There wouldn't have been COVID inquiries. There wouldn't have been Senate hearings. There'd 
have been booster shots and vaccines. You've been coming out of the womb. Bam! Off you go. Another one. Let's do it in utero. Save some time. Dr. Fink, is that safe? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Psst. The questionable speed at which regulators transition from lower paying government jobs to lucrative posts in the private sector is not unique to COVID-19 era developments or even the FDA or even the pharmaceutical industry. You know, don't you, that the politicians that are right now telling you what to do are going to go and take jobs elsewhere afterwards. You know that the people that are advocating for war on the mainstream media have connections to Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. You know that already, don't you? Whether it's a prime minister or a president, what do you think Barack Obama's doing right now? What do you think that Rishi Sunak's going to be doing in a couple of months when he's not prime minister? And then Keir Starmer, then person presumed to be next prime minister, what's he going to be doing when he's eventually not in office? That's what this system does. That's how it operates. All they have to do is control you and prevent you from going, hey, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. As long as they can do that, they can do this. A 2016 report concluded that over a quarter of FDA officials who reviewed cancer and hematology drugs for approval left their federal oversight post to work for the industry they previously regulated. Add that to people in Congress investing in stocks and shares in companies that they're regulating. It's a whole system. It's so deep and so entrenched that if you were to analyse it correctly, objectively, the only conclusion you could reasonably reach is, well, we're going to have to start again. <laughs> we're going to have to dismantle that system. We're going to have to make sure that there are, <laughs> off the top of my head, ordinary people involved at the FDA that can't be corrupted by it, that there are ordinary people at the level of government, ordinary people, and all of these agencies, you stop it being an enclosed and corrupted and corruptible hypocritical system of deception and ensure that it's transparent and fluid. And you want a revolving door between the public and government, not a revolving door between corporations and the government. It has to be reversed. The whole energy has to be reversed. The revolving door culture can be hard to grasp because it's revolving so bloody quickly. I mean, normal revolving doors can be quite scary, unless you're a child. Who doesn't love one when they're a child? But you're like, oh shit, I'm all no, I've gotten in with someone else. Ah! Oh no! But this revolving door, spinning round so fast, what are you supposed to do? The revolving door culture can be hard to grasp because the government has maintained a lax enforcement protocol, according to Dr. Doshi, who campaigns for greater transparency of clinical trials data. Transparency. Where were the investigations into transparency? Where was the demand from the legacy media? Look, can we see the information please on the transmissions? Can you tell us how this got approved? Before we start shaming everyone and telling kids they better get vaccinated in case they kill their grandmother, should we just double check that this isn't being sped through because people at the FDA are going to take jobs at Moderna? That happened in our country as well. Also the Prime Minister, now Prime Minister, who was Chancellor Lynn, had invested in Moderna. Where's the investigations into that? Where where are they? They don't have them. Why? Because who's one of the biggest funders of the legacy media? It's the pharmaceutical industry. How extraordinary. At this point, it's beyond coincidence, isn't it? The FDA, for its part, said the agency more enhanced ethics restrictions than most other federal agencies. Up against some pretty stiff competition. The FDA takes seriously its obligation to help ensure that decisions made and actions taken by the agency and its employees are not, nor appear to be, tainted by any question of conflict of interest. Yeah, I bet you ensure that they don't appear to be. I bet you ensure that. But there's no way that they're not tainted. Look at the information. Follow the scientists. Look, where are they going? Wait a minute, they're going out of the car park, they're laughing, they're throwing away their lanyard for the FDA, they're driving to Moderna, which is just next door, and they're clicking their heels as they're going through that revolving door, which they seem to navigate perfectly. The revolving door problem was especially damning with former FDA official Curtis Wright's transition from agency regulator to director of medical research at Purdue Pharma. Three years before taking the lucrative job at the manufacturer of OxyContin, the opioid that helped drive the overdose crisis, Dr. Wright led the agency charge in 1995 to approve it. Because people were like, how on earth did OxyContin, such a dangerous and addictive opioid, get approved? Well, now you know. The person that approved it went on to take a job at Perch. I didn't even know that. I'm in recovery for 20 years, one day at a time, from 2002, December the 13th, one day at a time, not a single day missed in the interim. And I didn't know that this had happened, that addicts were essentially being slaughtered by the irresponsible practices of the FDA and in this instance, Purdue Pharma. If they would do that then, would you imagine what, in the next couple of years, they went, you know what, let's never do anything like that again. That was wrong. All that money, all those dead poor people who we, let's face it, hate, was a big, big problem. What ethics are you reliant on? That Dr. Wright had a job at the FDA. Listen, this drug OxyContin, it does make people very happy and there's some side effects. Sorry, what did you say behind your hand? I said it makes people happy. I'm going to approve this, but before I do, can I bring my dog to work? You can. That crisis led 
to the death of half a million people, if that doesn't lead to government intervention into the practices of the FDA, if that doesn't lead to the dismantling of the FDA, then what's it going to take? Right, OK, how did this opioid crisis happen? Let's look at the facts. Let's speak to some key players here. Does anyone, for example, work at the FDA? Well, we speak to everyone who worked at the FDA. All right, what about people that worked at Purdue Pharma? We'll speak to all of them. Hmm, they're the same people. Do you think that might be leading to this crisis? If the legacy media don't carry out an investigation over years, speaking to hundreds of people, when the hundreds of thousands of deaths are taking place, do you think they might have a dog in the fight? Do you think they might have some skin in the game? Do you think that they might be part of the problem? Do you not see that the thing that's truly important about this pandemic is that it revealed absolute corruption of the state, big pharma and the legacy media working together in total conjunction and lockstep to ensure that their agenda could be amplified and met without question and that any independent media voices that dared to oppose it were shut down, whether that's Tucker Carlson booted off a of Fox or whether it's Joe Rogan having his own stuff to deal with or any other voices that you may have seen significantly attacked as a result of ongoing legacy media campaigns. How extraordinary. If they're so keen on investigations, where's that investigation? If the FDA can get away with this, then who's going to step in and regulate when it comes to the crisis that has apparently been brought about as a result of the pandemic? Who are you going to trust to ask the questions? The FDA is far from the only agency whose employees have moved on to higher paying private sector jobs for dubious reasons. Yeah. A recent study conducted by researchers at the University of Southern California and Harvard University reported that between 2004 and 2020, 54% of workers at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, remember from the legacy media, new things going to be improved, but it, oh my God, it's not just the FDA that has to improve it. That would be open to some kind of corruption. Then the CDC, they have to approve it, who left the agency for another job, moved into the private health sector where workers can get higher salaries. 54% of their employees went into the private sector where they can get higher salaried jobs. This isn't even a condemnation of individuals. So who among us doesn't want to earn more money for our families or to survive in this crazy topsy-turvy world? But this is an issue that affects hundreds of thousands, well, in the case of this, billions, billions of lives. And it was totally corruptible and totally corrupted. Craig Holman, the government affairs lobbyist for the consumer a watchdog group Public Citizen said the revolving door is particularly abusive in agencies that have a huge flood of money going in. And so we need safeguards to make sure they are serving the public interest. You need a period of time where the close relationships and the networks kind of break down. Yeah! You do. Actually, what you need is proper regulation and you need normal people, I would say, involved in these institutions. Not like, see this public watchdog that's actually exposed it, shows you how things should be run. Think about during the pandemic period, all those people that came forward at great risk to their personal career. Peter McCulloch, Robert Malone, Jay Bhattacharya, Dave Martin, Judy Miscovich, all those people that were willing to come forward and go, hang on a minute, this don't sound right. You, sir, and you, madam, are conspiracy theorists. That's what's going on here. I am the science, said Fauci. They were all right. They were correct. And the legacy media never investigated it because that's not what the legacy media does. As soon as the legacy media tells you they're in an investigation, you know something's going wrong. The pharmaceutical industry finances about 75% of the FDA's drug division. So the relevant bit, they almost entirely fund. Ban that, ban that overnight. We're going to have an FDA that's funded entirely separately from the pharmaceutical industry. Oh, um, well, what makes you think that's such a good idea? I don't know. We're just noticing there was this massive opioid crisis. In a sense, it shows you with barely any scrutiny at all that the entire system is so corrupted that it could basically never work again because we've all somehow imbibed the wrong set of values. None of us now know how to navigate our way through life without recourse to materialism and personal advancement. The ideas of community, and decency and service are lost. There are people that have those values and those people should be cherished and treasured and put in positions of leadership and power. And I've listed their names again and again. Malone, Bhattacharya, McCulloch, all voices that were left to the legacy media you would never have heard of. In our country, the United Kingdom, people move actually from government into Big Pharma. Now remember, Rishi Sunak, the prime minister of this crazy little country of ours, still won't tell you whether or not he profited from his hedge fund's investments into Moderna. I guess because the answer would make us also happy, we'd be carrying him around, juggling him about on our shoulders, and we'd maybe forget to vote in the next election. That could be the reason, or it could be he did profit from it. Certainly other people in government that were pivotal during the pandemic period, in particular advising whether or not we should take vaccines, spoiler alert, you should, according to them, now work at places like Moderna. Let me tell you about that. In August, Sir Jonathan Van Tam, the UK's former Deputy Chief Medical Officer who became a household name during the pandemic, became a senior medical consultant to the COVID-19 vaccine maker, 
Moderna. Huh, it's institutional, it's international. This is what we mean when we say globalist institutions, the establishment, the elite. We mean this, this is what we mean. Van Tam, a professor who was knighted. He's been knighted as a knight. He's literally allowed to go around on a horse in shining armor to his new job at Moderna. Da -dun -da -dun, da -dun -da -dun. And for more money, I have come to work in this place for the honor of earning more money. Oh, we don't deserve one so beautiful as thou. You could say you. Where exactly do I park this horse? There's a stable over there. Oh yes, I remember from my contract. I agreed that at the time. Van Tam, a professor who was knighted in the 2022 New Year's honors, was a member of the government's vaccine task force during the pandemic, which made decisions on supply contracts for COVID jabs and investments in manufacturing and clinical opportunities. He essentially was distributing your money. Tax pounds in this instance. But do you imagine similar things don't happen in the United States? Of course they do. We've just given you clear examples. The UK government bought tens of millions of COVID jabs from Moderna during the pandemic and struck a 10-year partnership with the US drug maker to boost research and development of mRNA vaccines in the UK, including constructing a new vaccine factory. These vaccine-like products have been so successful, let's commit to 10 years more of them. Build a factory right now. Hold on a minute. Should we have a radical reassessment of how the whole thing actually went down. During this COVID inquiry that's going on in our country right now, do you think they're going to say, hey, we made all these deals with Moderna. Maybe we should shut down those factories now. Maybe we should look at the relation. No, it'll be a very limited analysis. The bare minimum is what they'll do. And it was this person's fault and this person's fault, but the system itself is basically okay. They won't come up with a conclusion that many of you have already reached. The whole system is broken. You cannot trust the government. You cannot trust the media. It is time to oppose this power. Van Tam is prohibited from using privileged information from his time in government to further his business interests. Van Tam here. Van Tam, you're not using information gleaned from your time working in the government to advance your interests at Moderna. I'll be honest with you. That's all I'm doing. Rose Whiffen, the senior research officer at Transparency International UK said, when companies employ former officials, regardless of whether they worked in that industry before their government role or not, it raises the risk of privileged information being misused for commercial benefit. Also, it creates a culture, which is basically the culture that you live in. Currently, there are only minimal safeguards against the abuse of the revolving door between the public and private sector. The government should prohibit ex-senior civil servants and ministers from taking up positions where they've had substantial responsibility for policy relevant to hiring the company. But you see this minimal safeguards against abuse of the revolving door. No records at the FDA of former employees. Well, you try going on X and putting up like a natural immunity and vitamin D are quite good. We're worried the vaccines might affect press. <laughs> safeguards, regulations, records. There's records for you. You try being a dissenting voice. Suddenly, oh, hold on a minute. The mainstream media are interested. Let's do an investigation. Quick, put your best man on. Ah, find everyone they've ever spoken to. That's interesting use of resources. Regulations for you. You. Scrutiny for you. Skepticism for you. Transparency. No privacy for you. Maximum privacy for them. No safeguards from them. Wow. Guess who pays for it? They pay for it. So I get... No. No. We pay for it. We're funding it. They're exploiting it. When do you want to end it? In other heartwarming... Well, I say heartwarming. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly it does affect the heart. Pfizer. In other news, Pfizer on Thursday said its combination vaccine candidates targeting COVID and the flu will move to a final stage trial in coming months. But surely the FDA wouldn't approve it if there were any known risk for, I don't know, seniors or whatever. Uh-oh, the revolving door. A study released by the FDA found that flu and COVID-19 vaccines may slightly increase the risk of stroke in seniors caused by blood clots in the brain. Oh, that's not good. In particular, when the two shots were administered at the same time. Well, we are doing it at the same time. Protect your granny, get a shot. FDA researchers analyzed data from Medicare claims and found that the increase happened in adults who are 85 and up. This is the second study to find that COVID-19 and flu shots given together put seniors at a higher risk for stroke. So there you are. It seems like the revolving door between regulatory bodies, the government and big pharma means there are incredible oversights and not conflicts of interest, but alignment of interest. And you'll note that the legacy media isn't interested in asking any of these questions. Do you think that had it not been for independent media voices, you'd have a COVID inquiry, you'd have Senate hearings, or do you think we'd all be getting double boosted right up to the eyeballs? Think about this. The opioid crisis was surely significant enough to warrant a total overhaul of the FDA. 
day. But because it only affected junkies and poor people or whatever, it was essentially ignored or certainly not addressed to the degree that it should have been because otherwise you've gone, you can't have people working at the FDA then going to work at Purdue Pharma. You can't have people working at the FDA then going to work at Moderna. You can't have a process where the FDA is up to 75% funded by the companies that it's supposed to regulate and then allow people that were at the FDA to go and work at those companies. You can't have someone investing in a $500 million hedge fund and then becoming the prime minister of a country. You can't have someone offering vaccine advice during a pandemic then going to work at Moderna, can you? Yes, you can. That's the system. And it's a system that will continue as long as you have a legacy media that aren't interested in asking any questions about it or investigating it. Do you think that you would ever get the kind of lax kind of, oh, there's no safeguards, there's no regulations, we don't keep any records. They find records for you if they need them. You better believe you, me, they will. All regulation, all control for you, no regulation, no control for them. Does that seem fair? Can this continue? Or is it time to oppose it now? Surely it is. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments in the chat? Remember, we stream every day at these times. More important than that, though, is that you please, if you can, stay free.